Welcome back to this lecture series on heat transfer. Dear learners, in our previous lecture, we have studied about only steady state conduction without internal heat generation in a plane. There, we took the governing differential equation for that heat conduction phenomenon in a plane wall and we have integrated to get the temperature profile and we have also determined the rate of heat transfer. Similar process we are going to do in the case of hollow cylinder also. So, this lecture is about only conduction without internal heat generation in a hollow cylinder. Let us get into the lecture now. So consider a hollow cylinder whose internal radius is R1 and outer radius is R2. The surface at the inner radius R1 is maintained at a temperature T1 and the surface at the outer radius is maintained at a temperature T2. So, temperature T1 is greater than T2. Temperature at the inner surface is greater than T2. Therefore, heat transfer will occur from inner surface to the outer surface. Heat transfer takes place in the radial direction. And coming to the governing differential equation, so for 1D heat conduction in a cylinder, for a hollow cylinder, the governing differential equation appears like this. This is radially integratable form, which is given as 1 by R into D by dr of R into dt by dr, which is equal to 0. This is the governing differential equation without internal heat generation and steady state conduction. Now, this let us see as product of two different values. 1 by R is one term, other one is d by dr of R into dt by dr. This is another term. Now, this product is equal to 0. Remember, R value lies between R1 to R2, which is some positive value. There will be 1 by R will be some positive value. It cannot be 0. If this value is some positive value, the product is 0. The other possibility is that only this term should be equal to 0. So, if that is the case, then we say like d by dr of r into dt by dr equal to 0. So, now this we have to integrate twice because there are two differentiation inside this. dt by dr is there, then outside one differentiation is there. So, to get the value of temperature, we have to integrate this twice. Let us say I am going to integrate. So, we will get r into dt by dr equal to arbitrary constant C1. Now, from this we can say dt by dr equal to C1 by r. Integrating this again, we will get the value of temperature T. We will get as T equal to C1 into ln of r plus C2. Second time we are integrating, so we are getting the second arbitrary constant C2. Now, to find the temperature profile, we have to apply the boundary condition. The boundary conditions are at the inner radius R1, temperature is Ti and after R2, temperature is T0. So, both these boundary conditions we are going to apply. So, our general solution will become like this. Ti equal to C1 into ln of R1 plus C2. When you apply the second boundary condition, then T0 equal to C1 into ln of R2 plus C2. So, now I am going to subtract these two. To determine the values of C1 and C2, then we will get Ti minus T0 equal to, this C2, C2 will get cancelled when we are subtracting. So, we will end up with Ti minus T0 equal to T1 to ln of R1 by R2. So, finally, from this expression, the value of C1 is Ti minus T0 divided by ln of R1 by R2. So, now we have determined the value of C1. So, this I am going to substitute the value of C1 in equation number 1. So, when you substitute the value of C1 in equation number 1, you can determine the value of C2. So, the value of C2 equal to Ti minus all this term Ti minus T0 divided by ln of R1 by R2 into ln of R. So, the value of C1 we have determined and we have also determined the value of C2 both the values we have determined. Now, we are going to substitute the values of C1 and C2 in the general solution. This is C1 into ln of R. This is completely, this is C2 value. So, now we have substituted both the values in the general solution. From this, we can say uh, the, the, the term Ti minus T0 divided by ln of R1 by R2 is common. So, I am taking this common term out. So, we will end up with ln of R minus ln of R1 plus Ti. So, if you bring this Ti to the left hand side, then T minus Ti equal to Ti minus T0 divided by ln of R1 by R into ln of R by R1. So, now from this T minus Ti divided by Ti minus T0, this is equal to ln of R by R1 upon ln of R1 by R. This indicates the temperature profile. This, the next parameter which is to be determined is the rate of heat transfer. Rate of heat transfer, if you want to determine, then from Fourier's law of heat conduction, we know that Q equal to minus Ka dt by dr because temperature is varying with respect to the radial direction. Therefore, Q equal to minus Ka into dt. From this, we can write Q into dr equal to minus Ka into dt. Now, this we have to integrate to determine the value of Q. So, this area is going to be 2 pi RL for a hollow cylinder. So, if you integrate this between the limits R1 to R2 and the temperature from Ti to T0, we will end up like this. 
this dr by r is this r we have brought to the left hand side so therefore it has come to the denominator so if you integrate this you will get ln of r so ln of r and the limits are r1 to r2 this is minus k into 2 pi l these are all constant and this is the only variable so that is inside the integral integration so if you integrate this you will get t applying the limits you will get t naught minus t i so from this the value of q we can say it is 2 pi k this notation we have taken inside so this will become t i minus t naught divided by ln of r2 by r1 so this gives you the expression for the rate of heat and in the form of electrical energy we write q equal to delta t by r where r is a thermal resistance so delta t is your temperature difference t i minus t naught is written here this 2 pi k l when you bring it to the denominator it will appear as 1 by 2 pi k l so this is in the form of electrical energy so this temperature difference is t i minus t naught and thermal resistance is 1 by 2 pi k l ln of r2 by r1 so now in the case of hollow cylinder if you want to determine the temperature between the radius r1 to r2 provided if you know the temperatures t i and t naught then we can determine the rate of heat transfer using this relation and in our next lecture we are going to discuss about expression for temperature profile and rate of heat transfer for a hollow sphere under the condition of steady state conduction without internal heat generation. Thank you.